Part five of the seven part basic automatic transmission series deals with the transmission's oil pump. The oil pump is gonna be driven by the torque converter in some means or fashion. Usually on the hub of a torque converter, they have a set of splines, some flats or notches cut out. And here's a variety of oil pumps. You can see this one here has some lugs and uh, the, the hub would have some notches that would align up with that. This one here has some splines. So the, the hub of the converter would include some splines that would grab onto that. And this one here is using a chain and sprocket. And similar to this top one here, it actually would have a set of splines that would grab onto that sprocket. And it would, through that chain, it would drive this oil pump. We have a, a few different types of oil pumps out there. One of the most common setups is going to be a vane type pump or a gear type pump. You can see this is just two simple gears that are running up against each other. Uh, this one over here is a vane type pump. We're going to get into these pumps more specifically with the different units, but uh, you know these next, when we go to the bench and take a look at this, we're going to look at the different designs, either the gear and crescent design, the, the, um, the vane type design, and a gear type design. Let's look at how an oil pump works. We have a few different designs of oil pumps. This is called a gear and crescent type pump. It's basically called that because we have a couple gears and a crescent right there. You can think of the pump in a transmission like, a, like the pump in your heart, that this is supplying all the transmission fluid pressure that's needed to apply the clutches and bands and to fill the torque converter up with fluid, to keep lubrication fluid moving through it, to keep cooling fluid going to the coolers so they can keep the transmission temps down. So the pump is very important, as you can imagine. So this gear and crescent type is nothing remarkable Basically, we have our engine-driven component, which is our torque converter. You can see it's got these little arrows drawn on there because that's the rotation that this spins. The engine drives this component. The, it's got little mounting pads where it bolts up to the flex plate back there. Now this is a cutaway, a torque converter cutaway. So this normally wouldn't come in half like that, but one of the things that's important to note is they put a hub on this converter and that gives you flats that will grab onto the converter gear or the pump gear. Kind of sloppy there. I don't know if this is a perfect match, but um, it'll work. So when you install a torque converter into a vehicle like this would normally be all you see from the front of the transmission and when you install the torque converter, these flats have to go in there and grab onto that pump gear. It's one of the things that you have to line up when installing a transmission. When we start the engine up, you could see it's just spinning counterclockwise because that's what it would be doing on um, viewing it from the transmission side, not from the front of the engine. So, so when this engine is running and that pump gear spinning, this inner pump gear is going to drive that outer pump gear. And what causes this thing to pump is the fluid that's going to be coming in through this side. This is the suction. It's coming in from the, the filter in the pan. If you look, we've got a kind of a, an expanding area as this is rotating. It's going to take the fluid, that's going to create a suction because this, the volume is opening up. When that volume opens up, kind of like when your lungs open up, it brings air in. This, is, this, this little gear action here is going to cause this volume to open up. It's going to carry the fluid over and then it's going to compress it out on the other side. It's going to come out through the, to this passage. So this is suction feeding the gears. And then this is where, when that gear travels around, this is where it's going to squeeze it out, right out through there. And that's going to be our pressure. So as you imagine, this thing's spinning, it's drawing fluid in, carrying it over, squeezing it out. That's the way this simple little gear-driven pump works. Now we do have valves in the valve body that control pressure, and that's a different discussion. But right here is just the description on how the oil pump um, and the gear-driven oil pump works. There are measurements that we'll have to do when we rebuild these transmissions. We'll check the clearance between the outer pump gear and the case, or the, you know, the pump housing. We'll check the clearance between the outer gear and the crescent and the inner gear and the crescent. And then we'll check how much side or end play, if you will, you have between the cover, this flat surface out here and the gear itself. And of course, there's visual inspections too to make sure there's nothing scored or damaged. And another pump design is this vein type pump, and it uses these little paddle wheels. 
This is a very common setup that's used in transmissions that vary the output of the oil pump. The way they accomplish that is that, and you can maybe see this, there's a seal right there, and then there's this pin. Well, when, when this transmission achieves the pressure that it needs, through this oil passage right here, it applies pressure, and that's going to pivot this outer slide. So normally when this thing's running, like right now, this pump is gonna operate maximum output because kind of like on the gear-driven pump, what's happening here is I'm creating an area of expansion right there, and that sucks fluid in, and I carry it over here, and then I squeeze it out. So it sucks it in here, brings it in, and squeezes out there. But once I have enough pressure, if I move that outer slide like that, you could probably see what happened to that opening all the way around. It evened it out. So now, I don't know if I can hold this and do that. When this is rotating, I'm not creating an area of expansion. If I'm not creating the area of expansion, I've got, you know, I might just have fluid in there, but there's, and I'm also not compressing it. I'm not creating an area of compression. So I can variably change the output of this pump. By, by applying different pressure on each side or on this little cavity between that seal and here. So it's gonna work at maximum output until it gets its pressure, and then it's gonna start regulating, and it usually will move this pump into a position where it pumps pretty much only what it needs. So that is a variable displacement type pump. There are other pump designs, kind of like this one here, this little guy. This is off of a CVT. It is a vein type as well. Um, they, they, it's actually got uh, two inputs and two outputs. So it's like two pumps in one. It's a little bit different than the other vein pump because of that, and they have a regulator that basically just controls how much pressure as opposed to moving a slide. So this, vein, this is a vein type pump though. Vein pumps aren't that um, out of the ordinary. I mean, power steering pumps have used vein pumps for many years. So this little oil pump is actually off of a Honda CVT, and it's a kind of a gear type pump, similar to what you'd probably find in, in an engine, like a typical engine oil pump, especially on an old school like small block Chevy or something. But don't let it size fool you. This pump, even though it's real small, the gears are small. I mean, these trans, these CVTs can generate over 500 psi, a lot of pressure and volume pumping through those things. And, uh, you know, chain driven, but that's a pretty common setup, just like this other uh, pump here that was also Honda, it was chain driven. If we look at this one here, this is another design, and this is a gear driven pump. You look, it's uh, the torque converter is gonna grab onto these splines right on the inside of this gear. So I've got splines in there. and start the engine up, the pump starts spinning, it sucks in fluid from one side and squeezes it out the other side. So a variety of different designs out there. The manufacturers kind of have their own preference. Sometimes they'll design this vein type because they want the variable output and or to be able to change the output of the pump. And sometimes they'll be forced to kind of use these chain-driven type setups or gear-driven type setups to get it away from the um, at the center line of the transmission. Like a lot of transmissions, they're fighting for space between the engine and the back of the transmission, because if it's a transaxle equipped vehicle, we gotta squeeze an engine and a transmission in there sideways. So now that we've got all these gears, you know, six speeds, seven speeds, eight speeds, 10 speeds, we need to be able to conserve as much of that space behind the engine as possible. And one way they do that is instead of putting a thick oil pump, and using up the first inch or so with just the thickness of an oil pump, they just put a, a sprocket and bring it down and get it out of the way. They just put a sprocket in there and bring it down and get it out of the way, and then they have an off-axis oil pump, something that could be mounted off to the side, maybe below the gear train and so forth, so they're not adding to the thickness of that whole gear train and oil pump assembly. So, kind of like I mentioned with some of the other things, this is supposed to be just kind of a basic rundown of the oil pumps that we have in our transmission. 
and we will be seeing the oil pumps more specifically and the transmissions that you're covering on specifics on when you're taking it apart, measurements that you need to do, checks and so forth. So that is it on the basics of oil pumps.